So I'm out here with Zach today on his farm, and we're gonna go play with some old snowmobiles today, but they're not just any snow machines. One of them is actually belonging to your old dad, right? Yeah, my dad bought a brand new in 1997. Wow, and it's a Polaris? Polaris XC700, so it's a 98 model. It's okay. Probably still the fastest sled I've ever ridden. They're animals, basically. And next to it is a vintage Articat of some flavor, and we each only saw one photo of it, and I said, I'll take it. <laughs> so we're gonna try to get them running today, and if they do run, we'll probably scoot them around the yard here, or maybe find a ditch or something. So we're getting ready to go pick these snow machines up. I guess they're in a barn or a Quonset or something about 15 miles from here. Echo! I mean, we got some, we got some space in here is what I'm saying, which is nice. We'll roll them in here and hopefully get them running. And then we still got plenty of snow out here in Minnesota. Well, I shouldn't say plenty. There's enough out there though to ski them around a little bit. Well, we just backed up to this Quonset. Here they sit. This is a 98, and it's looking to be in really good shape, actually. We walked around them a little bit. It's been tunneled, extended here. That was a pretty common thing to do in the late 90s, early 2000s, because mountain sledding kind of got popular, but that's a good shape. And then we got an El Tigre. I think that's uh and I'm going based on the stickers here. And then the four vents. I think this is a 74, I would guess. And it's basically in mint condition. I mean, there's nothing wrong with this. Yeah. Anyway, there's an engine in there. I think it's a Suzuki. Looks like a Suzuki 500. They call that a Spirit. It's got uh, dual. Makinus, Makanas, Makunis, and she's fairly rough, I guess, maybe. Doesn't have a key. And yeah, we're still gonna try to get it to run though. I'm pretty confident the Polaris is gonna run, looks to be pretty good shape, but this one, I'm not sure. And clearly we have to call it Barry. That just makes sense. And then, 22 years this one's been sitting and the guy I guess he's the brother of the owner said he was tanking on it doing something farting around the plugs are out of it so I don't know if they parked it because it broke down or if he was just doing some maintenance but I guess we're going to find out and it does roll over so that's good doesn't feel quite very good but steers have fuel in it yeah, so you're gonna have some spunky fuel in that thing. That's okay, we could probably drain that out. By the way, if you're not familiar with Zach or Millennial Farmer, let me give you a little bit of insight. Basically, it's everyday life of a farmer, fifth generation farmer actually. Six. Um, six. Coming soon. And it's actually very, very good. It's it's wholesome family entertainment. It's a lot of fun to watch. Um, I actually put a link down in the description for you guys, so make sure you click on that and go check it out. It's a lot of fun, and you're probably even gonna learn something. I know I did, and I chuckle quite a bit. Well, should we get these drug out and load it up? We should. It's just looking, I got uh, custom custom wasp nests going on inside the, uh, inside the dashes here. Oh yeah, you don't see Some that. Pine often. needles moved in. Nice. Did you all look under the hood yet? I did, yeah. I looked under the hood right away, which, by the way, check. I mean, I got a feeling that's going to shine up real nice. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Wow. Just like when I was a young lad. These sleds were scary back in the day. I mean, these caused more injuries than Mike Tyson, and I ain't kidding you. Yep. They were something else. And that, ironically, was the fastest sled on earth for several years with the Suzuki 500. 
But then of course, people like Polaris figured out how to make snowmobiles and then here we are. Oh, they even, look at that. As long as you stick a paper towel in the air cleaner, you know good and well nothing will ever get in there. Yeah, mice will not eat that. <laughs> Drive belts on it, plugs are in this one. Did you pull on it yet? I didn't, I'm kind of nervous. Imagine it just fires up first pull. Make sure you pull your back out on the first try. On the first try? Look at that. She moves. Boy, these have compression. How hard do you want me to pull? That's good. Enough. That's good. Let's not screw anything up. Wow. Okay, well, we're going to drag them onto the trailers here. We'll probably let the young bucks do all the hard work. Yeah. And uh, get them back to Zach's because it's heated and start tearing into these things. Here's where they were sitting, that arctic kitty, about 22 years, and this Polaris was last tagged five years ago, I think, on the side of the machine. Um, but he thinks he might have got it running maybe three or four, something like that. But it looks to be in really good shape. We were kind of licking on it, and the graphics look still really good. Look at this. So this thing's gonna clean up nice. And then the El Tigre, Brad parked way up here. No real surprises here, it just kind of is what it is. But these El Tigres, they were fast in the day. Spanish for yard rake, or maybe it's tiger. One of the three, not quite sure. The track wasn't really rolling very good. This says 75, but it might be an early 75. I'm pretty sure it's a 74, but I could be wrong. If you're an Articat buff, let me know. But back in the day, someone really liked this machine. Painted it up with their name, had some pinstripes on here. But we'll wait to get her in the shed to look at it any closer than this. Got them drug in here. It's actually pretty easy. We just throw a rope to the four little ear there and just drag her on in. This thing, you know, it just keeps getting better as I look at it. I'm not sure. The only thing I can think of why they stored it without plugs that long is it just, it didn't run. They didn't care. It just got shoved in the corner. But I'm gonna start with the usual. I think I'm gonna maybe take the seat off, see if there's anything in the fuel tank. Carburetors obviously need to come off, then we're gonna need work. I don't have carb kits again. So we gotta be really delicate getting the bowls off of these carbs. I'm positive these needles are gonna be stuck and they were in here playing with the fuel lines. Surprisingly, this isn't that brittle. Usually you can't even move these. Exhaust springs are even off of it. It almost looks as if maybe they were getting ready to take this engine out, to be honest. Look at the suspension on this thing. I mean, that's fine. You can just float in the ditches with that. I think you just broke your rope. Yeah, she might be. You know, just, she's a little off. Windshield, there's something wrong with that too. I haven't quite figured it out. Doesn't look normal. So this unit was stored with that gas in it, so obviously that's gonna be bad. So I think that's where he's gonna start on this one is try to get the fuel out of it, get the air box off. This was kind of just flopping around. And we'll need access to the carbs anyway if we're gonna be pulling the fuel out. And then pull the plugs on this, and I think we'll put some WD-40 down all the cylinders and just kind of get them rolling around again. This one's got some bird poop and other stuff in it. Going to have to try to vacuum that out, I think. Seat off over here. 
some reason I thought this fuel tank would just come off if I took the seat off. I thought that bracket had bolts in it, but this one's still riveted in and I'm not going to mess with that. I'm just going to pull the air box off and the carbs and then I'll have easy access to the fuel line which is on the front right side of the tank and then I'll just try to flush it out with a little bit of fresh fuel and see how much junk's in there. Thankfully the gas cap was on at least. Bradley got the air inlet off and I just kind of poking around here I found a broken off boot so one of these wires is shot. Don't know if I'll get lightning out of that hose or not but this one maybe. And the ignition coil is unplugged. I mean, I think my theory is pretty spot on. I think they were getting ready to pull this out. So if it runs, I bet it's got a bad bottom end knock or completely gutless or something along those lines. But we'll keep going. And um, the biggest thing is, as long as we get spark, I might be, these are pretty solid carbs. So we might be able to bring those back around and at least get maybe one cylinder firing. That'd be enough to tootle around a little bit. That's completely wrong. That's gonna make a lot of racket. No brakes, that figures. So you got these loose in here? There we go. Gotta be a little gentle on these, they're plastic. One would think they're rubber, but they're not. And they like to break around the ridge here. See that screwdriver. Can you work it out that way? Push it back this way a little bit. Oh, good. These are the temperature sending units. Those go under the sparkulator. And I don't know if this one has the gauge or not. I can't read, but he's got some really nice shiny carbs over here. Nice and free. Is that not what yours look like? Pull this off. She is plumb full. Luckily, I don't think any got in the engine because the throttle bodies were down. But I mean, I'm gonna have to definitely get these off. The screw is stripped now. So we're gonna take it right off the flange here. And I think I got this one fairly loose. And hopefully we can get them off without dumping too much in there. This one fought me a little bit, but we got it off just by taking the whole piece out. And this one did come all the way out, but you can see they're just plumb full. Of... I'm not even sure what that is. It's like carpet slash feed bag forward slash wood grain stuff none th nothing got in here thankfully there was one kernel in here but that's not bad i'm gonna let these sit for a minute and i'm gonna drop some wd-40 down the sparkulator holes here and just roll it over a few times and just make sure everything sounds kind of ish gooder before i get too carried away here because something definitely was going on um, so I want to make sure that we don't have any huge mechanical damage. Then we'll come back and take a look at these a little bit closer, but even more concerned about lightning issue over here. If I can try to booger that up good enough. And that just happens from getting carried away, pulling the plug off. On dead mouse. Oh, sure enough, there's our little buddy down there. Just hanging out. We'll leave him be for now. These flexo light hoses are pretty nice. I'm not sure how much. Tablespoon and a couple centimeters. Something like that. I don't know. And let that sit for a minute and bake. Look how nasty this is. Solid varnish. Floats are stuck. Needle is stuck. Really bad shape. I'm gonna try to clean one up. If I can get one where I think it might function, then I'll spend more time on the other one. Well, I got her pulling over good. That actually doesn't sound that bad at all. And then I got the ignition out, swung that underneath here, and then I used the fingernail scraper tool on the Leatherman and was able to get this to fire over to on. And plugged all of this back in and tried like heck to get spark. And I wasn't getting anything. Made sure the kill switch was working. Went through everything a dozen times. And metered out the coil and I've got a dead coil. So that's probably what they were doing because all this was unplugged. Fuel lines were unplugged but they were probably troubleshooting either a fuel issue or an ignition issue. 
and it's for sure the coil. This is just shot, so um, couldn't find one locally. So I might, might be able to find one on the interwebs or the jungle website. But this thing is pretty much DOA, so I'm just going to kind of put her back together ish ish. Now I'm going to turn the attention over here on Zach 700. This one's looking. I think we got a chance here. I'm sorry about your Articat, Derek. That's okay. It happens. It's only because it's an Articat. Oh, oh, oh. Those you, are fighting words. You yeah, be you be careful, young man. No, but this thing looks like it was taken care of. It was cleaned. I, I think it. the only bad thing was it had fuel in it, but thankfully the carbs are. They look good. So carbs are on. Those are all clean. We just made sure the needles were moving. The floats were fine. Sheaves look good. Belt is decent dish chain case had a little metal in it but it's got some oil in it we cleaned up the metal got oil got some coolant we're getting really close he's getting the came with a pine needle option he's saying pine needle option in the air box <laughs> just getting out the ones that i can get to and then we'll uh it'll eat up the rest we'll just throw that back on here and, and then fuel and i think we're ready to start uh I'm saying five poles or less. You didn't sound that confident. I thought five sounded pretty ambitious. I'm, I'm gonna. I went with eight. My my gut says even more than that, but uh, I wanted to say 17. Cool. Oh, okay. Well. But with you guys saying five and eight, I'm thinking I'm gonna adjust it to 13. 13. All yeah. right. You might have to get it on. Uh, let's get it off the wheels. Or the thing's gonna just... So much compression Well, she ran great. Had one carb leaking. Uh, that might be the problem there. Gonna fix that up. It was just dropping fuel out there. But I mean, it seemed to run great. Suspension was doing what it was supposed to do. We need some brakes. Brakes? There's yeah. no brakes. Maybe we should know. take a look in there. But it was a good take a peek. Let's see. Well, the old Articat wasn't up for it today, but I think so with bad. an ignition coil and a couple hours, I might be able to get it. If that's something you guys want to see, put it down there in the comments. Otherwise, I might just put her on the parts file. But, Zach's Polaris, she fired life. Sounded pretty good. Five Derek's, poles. Five poles, I'm telling you. And uh, Derek's pretty much rebuilt the thing already. I mean, carbs have been fully rebuilt. I don't know what he's, he's got some juice and wrenches out here. Fixed the stop -elators. We're uh, just trying to have barley pops and he keeps going. Yeah. It works out well for me. Yeah. So we'll drag this onto the trailer. Big thank you to you, Zach, for having me out. Appreciate it. A lot of fun. And until next time, keep it greasy side down.